Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Hey, today I want to talk about the Geochron. This is by far my favorite world time clock that's ever been invented. Uh, it's, it's been around for over 50 years, the, uh, that Kilberg Geochron design. An elegant piece of engineering, this mechanical clock. Um, I wasn't really familiar with it until... Uh, the 1990s, uh, just a couple miles down the road here, they opened a branch of the public library and they had a Geochron in there. And so I, I recognized right away what it was, a map of the world that shows you where it's daylight and where it's nighttime all over the world, all at once at a glance. And uh, I realized, oh, this is, this is really cool. And I also found out what it's called, a Geochron. So I started looking into getting one. And I found out, well, they're a little bit pricey, and uh, in my financial situation at the time, I felt like eh, it's hard to kind of justify that. The, the basic model was about $1,500, and then it goes up from there if you get different options and, and things and different finishes. And, but that's okay. I mean, people put these in boardrooms and you know, executive suites and airports and stuff. And, and it is basically a handmade um, d device that d d requires a lot of engineering, a lot of know-how. So it, it's okay that it costs that much. But I decided, you know, I, I'd really want to save some money if I could and not have to pay that much for it. Also, I think Geochron demands to have its own space. It becomes sort of the centerpiece of the space where you put it. You wouldn't take a fancy, like a curio clock, a grandfather clock, and stick it right next to the fridge. You know, you'd give it its own space. And so I didn't really have a good space for a Geochron. Didn't feel like I had the budget for a Geochron. So I didn't get one back in the 1990s. But I thought, I, I wish they made like a, a computer version of it that I could just load onto a Windows computer and, you know, do it that way. And I found out there was such a thing. So that solved my problem of, uh, you know, the price and where to use it. It was about $50, which I still thought was kind of much, but I paid it anyway. And I really enjoyed software called World Watch made by Express Technologies out of Las Vegas. Now, as far as I can tell, that company's gone. Their website doesn't work anymore. The software is not supported, and it's really designed for older versions of Windows, but I can still run it. And so uh, I thought maybe, let me show you what this can do uh, while I'm waiting for an official Geochron device that's coming soon, uh, the Geochron Atlas 4K, which uh, is, is its own self-contained box that is a computer that runs software that gives you a really high resolution, beautiful Geochron uh, that you can, basically, you, you can show it on any 4K display or even an HD display. And it looks uh, much more like the actual Geochron than some of these other pieces of software that are out there. So uh, while I'm waiting for that to be in stock so I can get one, let me show you what this old software can do. All right, I want to show you how this uh, works. This was obviously designed for older versions of Windows, like Windows 98, and I'm running it on Windows 10 here. So it's not fully compatible. The software is no longer supported, but uh, I'll just show you what it does here. So I started up World Watch, and the first thing it's going to do is just take me to whatever mode it was in the last time I was, I was running it. So in this case, I've got it set so that the middle of the map is showing the position of the sun where it's most directly above the surface of the Earth. It follows a track uh, called the Analemma, and at this time of the year, we're just after the equinox or the official first day of spring here for the Northern Hemisphere, so that's where the sun is going to be right now at this moment. And I have the option of showing this Analemma or not. I have the option of showing uh, international borders or not. I have some options as far as the different colors of these land masses and also the water. There, there are a lot of things I can, I can set up here. And also, if I want to, I can change to a different position for the middle of the map. So I've already set one up here where the prime meridian is always going to be the middle of the map. So that's right here, Greenwich time, that, that particular line is always going to be in the middle. And uh, this, this line that separates daylight from nighttime is going to move more rapidly, whereas the map's going to kind of be in a fixed position. This analemma over here is going to move. Whereas with the other version, uh, this, this line here separating light from dark is not going to move quite as rapidly, and the entire map is going to scroll through. In fact, they have a little way you can, uh, you can simulate that. Here's uh, a fast animation to show you what a full day would look like. 
going through. So they've sped that up so you can see what it looks like on this version of the map. And let me just show you quickly how that would look on the other version of the map. I'll restart that animation and this is what it would look like again if the light and dark line moved and the map stayed still. I have some maps that are already saved here, so you know this is one of the default ones. I can go into my map manager here and there are a lot of things I can customize. So on this one, the background can either be this kind of very plain, uh, plain version here, or if I have a high resolution uh, bitmap, I could use that instead. So I'll just show you what that might look like with uh, another one of these maps that's already loaded. So yeah, something like that. So this looks more like a satellite image. So I could, I could create my own, or I could have some more customized ones. In fact, let me show you some of the ones that are already loaded here. But I think my favorite ones are either uh, this, this one that looks most like a satellite image or this one here. Well, the nice thing about this one here is it's not as taxing on the computer's graphics processors when it's a more simple version like this. So again, if I go up into the map manager, I can customize a few more things. Here's where I can select where the middle of the map perspective is going to be. Either, you know, right there, the current sun position is the middle, or here I could change it again to Greenwich, England, or I could have it uh, hovering around whatever city I've chosen, and, and that could be in the middle of the map. I can also have it display a lot of different features. So, for example, time zone lines. If I put that up there, okay, that makes for a very busy looking map with all those extra time zone lines, but that's something that I can uh, activate or deactivate at will. If I wanted to deactivate a whole bunch of these uh, different features here, I could really simplify the map. Another one here is a twilight feature. So uh, rather than having a hard line here between uh, daylight and nighttime, it's a little more... Well, it gives you kind of a transitional area as well that you can see there. So there's kind of your hard line of daylight and night, but then in there is more, you know, showing you the zone where it's kind of in between. Here I could change the color of the land masses and the, uh, and the water if I wanted to. You know, I've got some that I can select there, or I also have, of course, the, uh, the ability to custom pick a color in this area here, whatever I want it to be. So again, I have some options there. I can choose dithering instead of a, sh a shade, and uh, that may be easier on some of the graphics processors, but it does kind of uh, mess it up as you scale the picture size, even as I'm doing this now, recording this to, to make a YouTube video. Uh, that dithering, all those little dots there might start to look funny. So I'll, I'll keep it on just a simple shading setting there. You also have the ability to select cities to have them show up on the map or in a, kind of a clock bar on the bottom of the map. So if I select, say, Chicago here and say, yeah, I'd like a, a dot on the map where Chicago is. And I would also like, let's see, the time on the map and a little uh, bar down here at the bottom. Oh, and I better, I better change my font. So as you can see, there are a lot of things you can customize. Unfortunately, some of the features are lo no longer supported because I just can't find where the company's even in business anymore. So uh, the ability to track satellites, for example, I'm not able to download it from a database to find out where those satellites are anymore, but uh, that used to be a feature that was available. So anyway, I can, I can set the different settings for all my different pre-saved maps using that map manager. By default, the map just stretches to fill whatever window I'm using. So in this case, it looks okay. 
But if I were to change to, say, my map of South America, where it zooms in a little bit, the distortion seems a little strange there. So I can resize my window to make South America look a little more as you'd expect it to on the map. But by default, if I had a full screen thing going there, then South America looks very distorted. And, you know, part of the reason is it's old software and probably back when, uh, when this was new, most computer monitors were not the widescreen monitors. It was more of a standard definition screen uh, aspect ratio. So, but there are ways to, you know, you can create maps that, that zoom in on specific areas of the world and uh, show things there. Now this line that separates light from darkness can be called the Terminator line. It's kind of a technical name for it. It has nothing to do with the Terminator <laughs> movies. If I go in here and change the date, see right now we just had the first day of spring or the equinox yesterday. So instead of using today's date, I'm going to go in here and change this to, uh, let's see, I'm going to manually change this to say the 21st of June. So now it's more like the first day of summer or the solstice, which would be the longest day of the year for the Northern Hemisphere. So if I look at it this way, now you see that Terminator line is showing that the, the north part of the world is, uh, has a lot more light than the southern part of the world. And also here on the analemma, you can see that the sun is at its northernmost position uh, at that particular time. Let me go back and I'll change this to, instead of uh, June, I'm going to change this to around the 21st of December, and we'll see how it changes that. And there you can see that the sun is at the southernmost part of its track around the analemma, and in this case, the southern part of the world is getting more daylight than the northern part of the world. Because of the way the, the map is sort of distorted here as a Mercator projection, it makes Antarctica look really, really big. Of course, that's, that's one of the things that happens when you take a round globe and you flatten it out into one big rectangle. You are going to get some distortion at the northern and southern extremes of the map. If I wanted to, I could again change the settings on the map so that it wouldn't show quite as far north or quite as far south as it is with the current setting right there. I've got it showing all the way up to 90 degrees north and 90 degrees south, but if I were to change that, and instead of 90 degrees south, I made it, you know, only 60 degrees south, then you can see how that would change. Now you can't hardly see any of Ant Antarctica, and, uh, you know, I have the ability to customize that. If I check out some of these other maps, now here's one that would normally be showing you the current cloud cover on the surface of the Earth, but I'm not sure that this is updated anymore because, again, the software is not supported. But this would have been nice. Cloud cover, so, you know, some current weather conditions. Wave height around the world. That's something that it's uh, supposed to show you there. You know, current air temperature, different parts of the world. This would all have been really cool if uh, the software were, were still supported. But I'm afraid it isn't. I'm going to go back in here and show you what it did uh, just a couple of days ago on this, when it was uh, officially just before the first full day of spring, so just right before the uh, equinox. This is what it looked like. So you had almost a straight up and down line here for, uh, you know, when it, where it was dark and light, uh, just a little bit favoring the south there. And then on the day of the, you know, it was, this was officially the first full day of spring for the Northern Hemisphere. This is what it looked like. And you really did have that straight up and down line. So in theory, on that day of the equinox, everywhere on Earth gets the same amount of daylight. Uh, you know, roughly 12 hours of daylight and night everywhere on the Earth because of the way the Earth is tilted on its axis on that particular day. And now if I go back and change it to what is the, uh, the actual time right now as I'm recording this, that's what we're seeing. And uh, we're favoring the northern part of the Earth now with a little bit more light than the southern part. And that's going to continue to go for the next three months until it reaches its extreme. And also we'll see the sun tracking its way around this analemma. But at this moment, right now, what this is showing me is that if I were right there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, at that spot, 
That's uh, the one place on the earth where it looks like the sun is the most directly overhead for anyone that happens to be out there right now. Now I wanted to quickly show you before I completely forget, they have another animation that shows how the Terminator line changes shape every day throughout an entire year. This is how it looks on this map when that changes shape, you know, favoring either the northern part or the southern part of the world with more light. And then the other version of the map where uh, the map stays stationary, uh, you know, it might look something like this if you looked at it at the same time of day throughout an entire year. That's how that animation would show up. Some of the other features that were nice here, some of the tools here. This is a nice one, the time coordinator. So again, if you want to select some cities around the world and know what time it is there, uh, you know, compared to where I am right now, and that's nice. And if you were doing a lot of international business and you really wanted to have a list of cities that uh, you wanted to know the time in those cities at any given moment, that's a nice tool to have there. Also, if you want to look at the uh, sunrise and moon information right here, that's kind of nice. Right now it's for Chicago, Illinois, but I can choose another location and find out what the uh, sunrise and sunset is for those locations. Salt Lake City is the closest major city to where I am right now, so that's telling me some things there. Now, uh, I could also uh, go into and uh, create some custom cities, so even though Salt Lake City is close enough to where I am, if I wanted to pinpoint my house, I could enter the latitude and longitude and time zone and make that a custom city, and, and that would show up on the map, and it would actually be my house and I could have the time down here on this as well. Um, one of the drawbacks since this software is no longer supported is that the, uh, the daylight saving time database is no longer correct. Uh, the United States daylight saving time times, you know, the, 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 the weekends when they changed that, have changed since the time this software was done and no updates there, so that's kind of a drag. But uh, again, this was something that I got at the time because it was the closest I could get to an actual Geochron with a limited budget and some limited resources on where to put one and stuff. So this is the best I could do. And in its day, it was really great. It is, however, very taxing on the, you know, the, the processor, the graphics processor specifically. And this is not a really high-end computer I'm using right now to, to demonstrate this. But when you consider that you've got layer upon layer of graphical stuff that's going into this. So, you know, it's, you've got your base map, you've got a layer on top of that showing the Terminator line, a layer on top showing uh, international borders, a layer on top showing the, you know, the analemma. I, I made a custom line that went from Chicago to Sydney, Australia, and you can add custom lines and custom things. And the more you put layers on top of this, the more taxing it is for your processor to, to, to render all those graphics. So that's one of the reasons why um, it was difficult to, to use this even, even on a computer that was, you know, kind of current when the software was current. Because uh, let's face it, if you've got a really nice computer with really nice graphics, you're probably going to be wanting to use it to do, you know, graphical stuff or photo editing or video editing or something like that. You're probably not going to just let it sit there showing you one of these all day. So one of the advantages of the current model of the digital Geochron that's being sold by the Geochron guys is that it is purpose-built just to display uh, this in a very high-resolution, multi-layered 4K resolution. Uh, so, you know, you've got a piece of hardware that that's all it does. So you've got a you know pretty good idea that it's going to do that really well. And... It's not going to require you to have some other high-end computer to really render all that stuff out smoothly because it's got a box that just does it all in one. Here's another thing you can, you can have on here. I don't find this quite as useful, but it's more of a 3D rendering of the globe. And it doesn't necessarily show you, you know, where the sun is at any given moment. It, it's constantly rotating here. So it does kind of show you the Terminator line, and I can actually drag this down and uh, see more of the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere if I want. So that's kind of a nice feature to have that kind of 3D rendering. But I, I can tell that it's more taxing on the, the graphical uh, hardware in the computer to have to render this out and keep this moving somewhat smoothly. 
there's also one that shows you kind of a, a, a double globe here showing you, um, you know, kind of the two sides of the earth at once. And if I drag this down, uh, I drag the, this so I can see the northern part, and at the same time, the southern part is automatically adjusted there to show me as well. So this is a neat idea, but, um, well, I'm, I'm not sure how how well it really works on a monitor like this. Now, another thing that was nice about this software is that you could use it, you could set it up as your screensaver, and the settings basically were whatever your last settings were, uh, last time you shut down the program, that would be the screensaver that would pop up. And here I can say, well, always show the world map during the screensaver or show the world map and have a timeout and then go to a blank screen. So you've got a couple of options there. But when I do this, see, I can preview the screensaver. And there it goes. This is uh, what, what it was set to the last time I shut it down. And so it goes to full screen. Of course, there's no there's no clocks on the bottom or there's no uh, menu bars or anything on this so that's kind of nice so if I were to close the program now and then preview my screensaver now it goes to whatever that last whatever that last setting was and in this case there is a clock on the bottom of the screen and so that's kind of nice you do have a screensaver option even when you're you know using your computer for all your productivity tasks, all your high-end graphic stuff you might be doing. If you walk away, a screensaver comes on. That's a nice one to, to see there. I realize that there's other software out there that can do some of these same things, and uh, I never really got into those or found out much about them because I already had the World Watch software. And now that I know that Geochron has its own official Geochron digital device, I'm, I'm not going to bother looking into the other stuff because I think this Geochron device is going to be really, really great. And so I will show that to you as soon as I get it. I'll do an, uh, an in-depth review on the official Geochron 4K device, and that will be on an upcoming episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.